Hey everybody, my name is Monsel and I'm with Neutropedia and today we're going to take a look at phenylparacetam and specifically how this drug impacts my brain using a QEEG brain map. So guys, if you've never heard of phenylparacetam, it is a drug in the racetam family that was synthesized in the early 1990s and it is predominantly useful for memory formation and recovering from brain trauma. At least that is what the studies show. However, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence from myself included that suggests phenylparacetam is a really great nootropic for improving focus, concentration, and creative workflow. So last month I visited the Peak Brain Institute in Los Angeles, California where I met with Dr. Andrew Hill, a neuroscientist and one of the founders of Peak Brain Institute. Now Dr. Andrew Hill helped me set up the QEEG brain map and continual performance task where I looked at my brain on the baseline with no nootropics and then again the second day with phenylparacetam. So before we get into the results of the QEEG test and look at what Dr. Andrew Hill found with my brain on phenylparacetam, let's talk a little bit more about the existing evidence and empirical data in the NCBI database for phenylparacetam. Now there's not a ton of evidence around phenylparacetam, but most of the early studies were around cognitive decline and memory formation. One study found that people who suffered from brain trauma had a 7% quicker increase in their recovery, including stroke recovery, after taking phenylparastam. So this may not be highly relevant for everybody, but it is obvious that it interacts with the cholinergic system and can improve impaired memory in many different people. Now for the focus and concentration bit, we have even even less evidence, but we have a couple small markers that could point us in the right direction. First of all, a phenylparastam study showed that many of the participate participants had insomnia when using phenylparastam because of the psychostimulation. Essentially, they were too stimulated and they couldn't go to sleep as easily when they took the phenylparastam. Now, the second little piece of data that I like to point out is the Olympic Anti-Doping Agency has put phenylparastam on their banned substances list, which means many people who are in the highest level of competition cannot use phenylparastam because it's too physically stimulating. Now, of course, that's not something that you or I have to worry about necessarily, but it is something to keep in mind because these athletes have been able to see these performance enhancements when they use phenylparastam, and we can actually utilize that to our advantage. So when I went into the Peak Brain Institute in order to look at a QEG brain map, I initially started with a continual performance task, a CPT task, which Dr. Hill describes as a CPT is a standard measure of executive function. They've been around for like since the 50s. We put on a brain imaging cap, squirted it with some gel, and looked at the electrical readings in my brain, which in other words is a QEEG. With this QEEG, we looked at the data from day one to day two. Dr. Hill found that I was inattentive on day one and had some symptoms of ADHD. So there's two main takeaways that I found really interesting with this brain QEEG. Number one, the inattentiveness that I had without any phenylparastam or any other nootropics was actually removed completely with phenylparastam. The second day that I went in, I took the QEEG and it looked as though my inattentiveness was completely gone. In fact, Dr. Andrew Hill suggested this worked like an ADD medication for the purposes of my brain. You're making a lot more beta, low beta frequencies, not stress frequencies, but like concentration, 
focus, executive function, those have all come up really nicely. Now, even though I don't have a diagnosis of ADD or ADHD, it is indicative of how this drug impacts my ability to focus and concentrate on specific tasks. And for a lot of people who are taking amphetamine-based ADHD medications, this could be a great alternative. Now, the second really interesting component, which I thought was far more interesting than the increased focus and concentration, was enhanced creativity and flow states. According to Dr. Andrew Hill, my brain waves went from a slow alpha to a fast alpha, which suggested that my brain waves were more in a flow state, more checked in, and more able to create much of the work that you see from Nutripedia. So guys, I know that this is a long way from substantial scientific evidence that proves you should take this drug. And that's not what I'm trying to say. In fact, this is empirical evidence that for me specifically, phenylparacetam does work to improve my focus and concentration and it helps with my creativity and incorporating flow states into my daily routine. Now I already thought that this was the case, but I wanted to check with a empirical measure such as a QEEG. So if you're looking for these benefits, don't necessarily run out and buy some phenylparacetam. It may or may not help you specifically, but, but here is the important message that I want you to keep in mind. Phenylparacetam was invented multiple decades ago, and there doesn't look like there's very many applications to current medical conditions, which means we're probably not going to see any studies on phenylparacetam going forward. Given that the evidence is so scarce with phenylparacetam and we don't find much more going on in the future, I implore you to try phenylparacetam for yourself. So guys, test it out, try if it works for you, and see whether it's worthwhile. Now I do want to add one caveat, and that is phenylparacetam, despite its benefits, can develop tolerance very quickly. If you take it every single day, you'll quickly find it doesn't have the same effects. The tolerance problem is actually worse than caffeine. You become more tolerant to phenylparacetam quicker. Now the way that I have worked around this is simply cycling phenylparacetam with many other drugs. I like to use caffeine and L-theanine, I like to use phenylparacetam, Nupept sublingual solution, and Qualia at times, but I cycle those throughout the week so that I never have too much tolerance to phenylparacetam and I can actually use the benefits. So guys, I know this has been a short video and you probably are interested more in the phenylparacetam and specifically what Dr. Andrew Hill found. If you do want to learn more, go ahead, click the link right here and you'll be taken to the Nutripedia page with the full outline including an interview with Dr. Andrew Hill. So go ahead, check that out again, it's right here. Anyway guys, I hope to see you guys next time.